Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambeau channel. You're really not going to like what former Goldman Sachs executive Rao Paul had to say the other day about XRP. Uh, saying that people, uh, or holders of XRP, are basically cult-like. I'm going to give you the exact quote, because I don't want to take anything out of context here. And I'm going to push back against some of what he's saying here, because I respectfully disagree. Now, that being said, and I'm sure many of you know who Rao Paul is, he's very famous in the world of crypto. Um, I've been a fan of Rao Paul's for years. Uh, very smart guy. Uh, I think he makes a lot of sense a lot of the time, though this would not be one of those times that I would agree with him here, but I very much believe that he is an intellectually honest person, which is what matters to me. If somebody's saying crap about XRP and it's because reasons and there's nothing behind it and they're just trolling, if it's anything along those lines, well, I'm like, eh. But with the case of Raul Paul, fine, I can't know for sure what's in his heart and mind, but based on his the way that he's conducted himself over a span of years and how he's specifically spoken about XRP in the past, uh, I have a very strong suspicion that he's just being intellectually honest and I just don't agree with what he has to say about XRP, and I'm going to explain why. But uh, before going further, I do want to be clear, I do not have a financial background of any kind. I am not offering financial advice, and you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. So I, I want to note that before the SEC sued Ripple, effectively attacking all XRP holders on a global scale. Uh, at the beginning part of, of the month that happened, December of 2020, uh, Rao Paul, who is also not just a former Goldman Sachs executive, he's well known for being the uh, founder of Real Vision, and he had on his platform uh, Santiago Velez, who is just a wealth of knowledge of pretty much all things crypto, and he was very well versed uh, in in. Uh, everything to the time to the point in time of having to do with uh, XRP and what Ripple is doing with XRP, so on and so forth, the entire XRP ecosystem. And in late 2020, before the lawsuit even dropped, Rao Paul was like, yeah, I don't really know much. I'm paraphrasing, but he's like, yeah, I really don't know much at all about XRP, but I'd like to learn. And uh, then when I started talking about it on social media and I had some of the Bitcoin types out there tell me, that I shouldn't look into it, and I said to you, uh, you know, you'll, I'll, I'll not be told what I, sh I, I can and can't do. It was something to that effect, and he was really pushing back against the toxic Bitcoin maxi types. And so I was happy to say, I was like, that's a breath of fresh air right there. Here's a person who is informed, really smart guy, background starting in traditional finance dating back decades, uh, jumped into crypto, has done quite well for himself, and was like, no, I do want to learn about XRP, and he did. To his credit, he did. And then, after the SEC uh, attacked Ripple, he actually publicly said, hey, uh, I went ahead and bought some XRP, and when it was around a dollar, he was saying, look, uh, here's the bet. I, you know, I think that Ripple's going to win this thing, and XRP is going to be worth way more in the future. And he was even saying he wouldn't be surprised. Uh, mind you, it was, it was about a dollar at the time, but I remember him saying that he wouldn't be surprised to see it go 10x, so somewhere in the neighborhood of $10. Now, I don't know if he's still holding XRP, and he's certainly uh, not optimistic for it right now, but what's interesting to me is the way the way he's justifying his position, uh, and again, I'm still a fan of his, I think he's being intellectually honest, I just disagree. Um, it's, I, don't, I don't find it to be a very compelling argument, and on top of that, perhaps more interestingly, he's saying this at a time when, and I don't think he, I don't think he knows this. XRP is has been dramatically outperforming of the other top 100 coins in the market for like two months now, dramatically outperforming. Depending on exactly what time frame you're looking at, and I remember I was highlighting this in videos like within the last week or so, it was like number one or two in terms of top performers, depending on exactly what time frame you're looking at over the last couple months. Truly incredible, considering the degree to which XRP has been beaten down. Uh, based on a number of metrics and by the SEC, of course. Uh, so incredible to see that. But we've got crypto media covering this. You can see Rao Paul says XRP enthusiasts misled by a cult-like mentality. And here's the quote from him. This is I, I transcribed this myself. Here's what he had to say. XRP, it's like from two bull markets ago. You might be right. You might love it forever. Just please move to whatever the strong momentum is. So let's pause to see what he's saying right there. Because it hasn't gone on a run, 
since two markets two market cycles ago, so that would be 2017 into early 2018, that in and of itself is some sort of indicator that you shouldn't have it. That's clearly a huge part of the argument. So let's move forward. I've got more to say about this, but let's move forward with what he had to say. I know there's that fear in your head. This time, it will be the big one. You'll get plenty of notification to get back in. But don't miss the bull market because you're in a narrative of past. And the community is huge. I don't want to get attacked by people online for this, but I just feel like you're being done a disservice by being in a cult. Our job is to be mercenary. So let me... There's a lot to unpack right there. So can I just go straight for the meat of it? He used the word cult. So here, here's the definition of cult on Merriam-Webster's website. And you know, there's a number of ways that the word cult can be used. Lots of words in the English language can be used for multiple ways that are sometimes completely different. The way that it's being used here very clearly and the way it's used in crypto is as a pejorative. It's to mock people, right? That is what it is. So I'm not saying he's got some sort of, um, you know, venom in his heart when he's saying this. I don't know for sure what he's saying, but of course people are going to take that as an insult, right? I think a lot of people will. Um, you can look at definition number one here of the word cult, which is as follows. A religion regarded as unorthodox or spurious. Yeah, that's right. We're talking about the Kool-Aid sippers there, right? <laughs> That's what we're talking about here, the Kool-Aid sippers. And so I've even used this term uh, to somewhat mock some of the toxic Bitcoin maxi trolls out there. Not that I'm literally saying that the, the, the Bitcoiners out there drinking Kool-Aid and all that crap. What I'm saying is they are, they, they, they live in such an echo chamber that I find it comical, comical and silly. And they have all, so to speak, you know, drank the Kool-Aid, meaning that... They've, they've just, they've spouted these ideas back and forth in this echo chamber from one person to the next, and they hear it again, and then it's reinforced, and it results in a lot of nonsense, including actual maximalism. One coin to rule them all. There will only be one cryptocurrency that is the winner. It's completely ridiculous. It's an absurd idea. Of course it is. And, and so that's why, so like I've even said it to kind of, not in a mean spirit, but I've had a little fun. I Like there have been at least a few times, I'm sure, uh, you know, running this channel where I've said, yeah, they, they can be a little cult like. Yeah, it's to be a pejorative. Like, I don't have actual venom towards them, but it is, it is a knock to tease, right? And so, um, obviously, when he says cult here, of course, that's how people are going to take it. You know, there, there should be no surprise there. But when he says, I know there's that fear in your head. This time will be the big one. Yeah, exactly. That's why I have such a huge problem with what he's saying here. And look, I don't care what you guys do. You buy, you sell, you hold. It doesn't matter to me. I'm not advising you on what you should do. I don't know what's best for you, period. But I will tell you what I believe is best for me. What I believe is best for me, and I think it's probably, I, it's, I think it's true broadly speaking, even in traditional finance like stocks, is what's best for most people is not to be, you know, doing analysis on a bunch of stocks or cryptos. It's to have broad exposure to the asset class and then let time pass. There will be winners that you hold and there will be losers that you hold. This is a, the reason that when it comes to investing in stocks, this is so boring, but it just works. There's nothing sexy about this, but just buy ETFs that track the S&P 500 and then your net worth goes up substantially over a span of decades. You let time do the heavy lifting, right? So uh, when he says here, again, you know, the quote is, I know that there's fear in your head. This time it will be the big one. Exactly, because either you have exposure if it's going to go or you don't. And since we don't technically know for sure, uh, wouldn't it make sense to have broad exposure to the entire asset class, which would include these old coins, the dino coins? Should I just not have Bitcoin? Should I not have ETH? I mean, I, I've seen enough video from him that I know... And I think he's kind of shifted it to Solana, but for a long time, he was he was big onto ETH. And so good for him if he feels like he can hop ship from one thing to the next, whatever the hot thing is. If he's going to advise people to try and do that, he's leading them down the wrong path. So it's this, I say the same thing about those people out there. And, and mind you, like, he, he is the real deal so far as I'm concerned. Like, he's an actual sharp guy. But the types of people that, even if you're talking about traditional finance, anybody that would advise people 
to try and spend time picking stocks, this and that. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. No, 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 no. Because when you're looking at the S&P 500, you're, you're talking about the combined wisdom of how many market participants and you think you're going to outdo that? No. Absolutely. Even hedge funds fail at that consistently, you know? Or even if they don't for a small period of time, over a long enough period of time, they pretty much all do. I'm serious. Look at it. I'm not kidding. I'm not making this stuff up here. So the idea when he says, hey, you, just, you know, this is going to be the big one. You're worried you could miss it. Yeah, exactly. That's why you have broad exposure. That's why I have 42 different cryptocurrencies. And I'm not counting on making a fortune on all of them. But I expect that some of them are going to be worth way more in the future. And frankly, since I've been here since 2017, a lot of them are. A lot of them are worth way, way, way more money than I put in because I bought them and then I just held them. It's not complex. I don't, as a result of the simplicity of what I'm doing, I don't have anything to sell you. Sucks for me. I would love to sell you stuff. I, I just, I don't though. I don't have a course to sell you. There's nothing there. Uh, but I do believe that's what's best for most people when it comes to investing in the stock market. When it comes to investing in crypto, you buy stuff, you have broad exposure, you let time pass. And so to think that there's not a place for, for, for these coins, especially XRP, which the world, the world is screaming XRP makes sense. It has always been in the top 10 coins by market cap for its entire existence. And so remember what I was saying a couple minutes ago about it's, how it's better for the typical person to just buy an ETF that tracks the S&P 500 rather than trying to do their own research uh, and get in and out of positions. And, you know, the reason is you're realistically, the, the typical person is not going to be able to out-research and out-reason what the rest of the market is saying makes sense. Like, you're not going to outdo that. It's the same thing with crypto. This is the world screaming, hey, XRP makes sense. I understand it hasn't hit a new all-time high since 2017. And you know what? That's because it was the number one performer uh, for that entire market cycle when it went from bottom to top, literally an increase of about 80,000%. So that's what's kept it, that's, a, that's part of what has kept it in the top 10 coins by market cap. Now, if it didn't make sense, it would have done what all sorts of other 2017 era coins did, which is they, they poked up into the top 10 for a brief moment in history, and then they fell out, and pretty much none of them returned. That could have happened too, but the fact that XRP has always been there, isn't that telling? Or should we just not value large cap coins? Or just not XRP because reasons. We don't, do we not value, do we not want to have large, mid, and small cap with maybe waiting, I mean, my opinion anyway, just waiting more heavily on the uh, large. I don't get as adventurous. Like to me, investing in crypto, it's sufficiently risky. I don't need to get into the small caps and, and micro caps so much. I'm not very interested in those at all. I'd rather just go to where they're, yeah, they're large cap coins, but there's so little money in 2024, even in large caps. It's like the multiplier effect you can get on those is substantial. So when he says all this stuff, I'm thinking, my God, this is bad advice for the typical person. And so maybe for him, uh, and maybe he pulls this off and he can track whatever the new hot narrative is and get into AI coins. And, the, you, know, you know, it's funny enough, actually, the real world asset narrative, that's a, that's a, a, a hot one for, in, well, in two, much of 2024. And that cracks me up because the XRP Ledger actually has the world's first ever built in decentralized exchange where you can tokenize stuff. So, like, it was the first one where you could do that, just, just saying. And there's what Ripple's doing with T-bills, which I reported on recently. Not just them, it was Open Eden, but, uh, you know, I don't want to go on too much of a tangent on that. I'm just saying that even if uh, he can just masterfully pull all this off for himself, it is bad advice to suggest to people that they shouldn't have exposure to a large cap coin like XRP. I mean, honestly, what I think makes the most sense... Again, it's just encourage people to have broad exposure. That's the same thing with the stock market. Broad exposure. ETF, tracking the S&P 500, boring stuff, do that. Similar concept with crypto. It works. Go figure. It's just, why isn't he telling people not to buy Bitcoin then? Or, or, or is he? And I just don't know. Maybe maybe I just haven't heard, heard him say, don't buy Bitcoin or ETH. Or is he saying that now? Because he used to love ETH. I, I don't know. I, I'm not sure, but this doesn't make sense to me. And so then the, the final part of his quote was, after he said is our, our job is to be mercenaries. He says, we're in the job to make money, not to be a cult. Cults don't make money except for the leaders. 
So I know it hurts people when I say this. Cardano, XRP, there's a whole bunch of these. I really hope you're right, but I hope, but, but hope is not an investment. <laughs> so hope's not an investment. But I would, I would ask him, is having broad exposure an investment? Is that an investment strategy? Does that make sense? The answer has to be yes. It absolutely has to be yes. And this is why I said also, it's so funny that the, the time in which he's saying this, and again, I don't, I'm assuming he's not up to, to the, 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 uh, up to snuff in, in terms of what's been happening within the XRP ecosystem and uh, as far as what's been happening in terms of price action, or else he wouldn't have said this because the timing of what he said is terrible for him because XRP has been about the best performer in the top 100 for the last couple months. The timing for him couldn't be worse, but I think he doesn't know that. Uh, nothing Again, nothing against him. I'm just sharing my thoughts and kind of pushing back on some of what he's stating here because, again, even if he's right for himself and he can masterfully pick all these wins when it comes to crypto, that's not what most people should even try to do. You know, that goes against his mantra of, his mantra of don't F this up. Remember him saying that? He's the one that does that DT, um, DFTU, don't F this up. And he gave this list of things that you shouldn't do. And I'm just sitting here thinking, well, isn't, shouldn't part of that being just make sure you have broad exposure for a prolonged period of time? Like, it, it, shouldn't that be part of it? I, sh I certainly think so. And so he, he mentioned Cardano. It's another coin that I've been holding since 2017, bought it for a few pennies. And uh, I think it was like 37 cents earlier today. It's been higher than that in the past. We'll see what it does this market cycle. But um, this is kind of funny, though, because Charles Hoskinson, founder of Cardano, uh, he had something to say about this, kind of brief. <laughs> so here's a headline. Cardano founder reacts to Rao Paul branding XRP and Cardano communities cults. <laughs> That's an unfortunate where he really, it's not in his best interest to have used this. So... Uh, here was the video clip that heavily circulated, and I, I transcribed it. It was just 58 seconds long. And uh, this was seen, this, just this clip from this one individual, Good Morning Crypto, 681,000 views. So this has been pretty widely circulated, and that was just since yesterday afternoon. So that was reposted by Charles Hoskinson. And he wrote, and he actually tagged Brad Garlinghouse here. He said, so, Brad... When are we going to the secret cult meetings? I never got the memo from Rao. <laughs> Just have a little fun. Um, I, 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 don't, I don't think they're going to go to that. <laughs> they do not exist. Uh, kind of funny, though, but is what it is. And, of course, another reason that this is super unfortunate timing for Rao Paul, because, again, he said at the end of that whole quote, he said, uh, he said at Cardano, XRP, there's a whole bunch of these, so we, meaning old coins. This is also happening at a time when Tron is breaking to the upside and it just hit a new high. And I think it also broke above its 2021 cycle high, if I'm not mistaken anyway. Um, and so here you go. It's got up today, which is 16 and a half cents. It's currently at 15.3 cents. Uh, Dino coin here is supposed to be dead. Uh, that's one of those coins that briefly popped into the top 10 coins by market cap in 2017 fell out and only recently got back. I think it might be at slot number 11. Yeah, it's at 11 right now, so a hair below that. But regardless, the point is, this is one of the few that actually has had some reasonable performance. I don't know if it's ever going to hit a new all-time high. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. It could. I don't know. We'll see. Um, I'm just going to keep holding it because I don't give a damn. I just want broad exposure. And then if it's, you know, at some point I'll be enticed to sell is my assumption. Um but, but anyway, so th this, this is also happening at the same time. He's like, oh, these old coins. you got to keep up with the new stuff, son. Get to the new stuff. And I'm sitting here like, yeah, but look at the action. In the real world, what is happening with Tron? What is happening with XRP? Come on, man. Come on. <laughs> Broad exposure. And so, my gosh. And so I do have some, uh, some newer coins. I have older coins. I just have broad exposure. What the hell is wrong with that? You know, I, I just... Y it doesn't have to be all or nothing, which is why it was surprising to me that he was speaking as though it had to be a choice of, well, pff, uh, XRP, then then you, you don't have other stuff? You, no other, it's just XRP? It's like, is there anybody out there that actually only owns XRP? That would be a rare human, honestly. Most people in our community, I know enough to know, most have broad exposure to the asset class to whatever degree, even if XRP is their largest holding. 
And for me, that is the case. So what? It doesn't matter. It's not some sort of negative. Like, even if I had no, no XRP, if my XRP were stolen from me, I got hacked and it's all gone, because of everything else that I hold, I'm going to be fine. I'm going to be just fine. Even though XRP is my largest individual crypto holding. I just, I don't, I don't get where he's coming from on this stuff. It just, it doesn't make sense. And I, I think he makes a ton of sense on a lot of stuff. And again, I don't think that he was, uh, I don't think he was trying to be unreasonable. I don't think that he was, uh, despite the word, using the word cult, which he probably should have known better to be fair. Uh, despite using that word, I think that he was being intellectually honest, honest here also which would be in line with the rest of his track record so far as I can tell. I do believe that he means what he's saying. I just respectfully disagree. Um, and, and also take a look at this. There's this post from chart analyst Dr. Magic. He reposted that video clip of Raul Paul, and he clearly doesn't agree either. And he said, Below are the charts for Cardano price against Bitcoin and XRP against Bitcoin, ETH, and XRP dominance. Quoted post is why the Dino coins melt up will be the most hated and powerful of all, love to see it. And so he doesn't believe there's going to be a meltdown in price for the quote-unquote dino coins. He believes there's going to be a melt up. And so he shared that what's on your screen right now, this first chart, this is uh, on the top here, Cardano price against Bitcoin. Um, and then he's got, of course, the uh, a couple other metrics pertaining to it, RSI and LMACD on the bottom here. And it looks as though he's kind of hinting at the same thing that he is with XRP, because when it looks like it's priced so poorly against Bitcoin, historically, is that such a bad time to be an XRP? Well, no. And so you can see here's XRP price against ETH, XRP price against Bitcoin, and XRP dominance in the middle. Moving to the upside, the last couple months have been pretty damn good. XRP substantially outperforming other top 100 coins. So... <laughs> You guys tell me what you think is going to happen. I just wanted to kind of uh, lay out some thoughts here. Um, so, again, still uh, nothing but uh, respect for Raul Paul. I still am a big fan, but clearly on this particular point, I disagree. And I really don't think that this is the best suggestion to make for people investing in crypto. I think the best suggestion to make for people investing, period, whether it's uh, the stock market or the crypto asset class, is to encourage people... Uh, since you're not going to be able to be some sort of masterful researcher uh, on a scale that's greater than the collective knowledge of all humans, since you cannot do that, you won't, try it, you'll fail, what it does make sense to do is just have broad exposure to stocks and broad exposure to crypto, right? If you do that, if the crypto pie gets bigger and the stock market keeps getting bigger over, over a span of many years, perhaps decades, you're probably going to be fine. Don't you think? Why isn't that the message? Why isn't that the message? Because really, even if almost all of the coins I hold go to zero, if I have like one or two winners, that is literally all that it takes. That's it. Even if it's Bitcoin, I don't care. I'm not saying it to be. I think that <laughs> I think that most. I'm expecting that most of my returns are going to come from the altcoins. I'm just saying, over a long enough period of time, if you have the exposure. You'll probably be fine. Like, if you imagine my exact portfolio as it stands right now with these 42 different cryptocurrencies, if I changed nothing and just held it for 20 years, I'm willing to bet that most of those coins go to zero. I'd be willing to bet that. Would there be one or two winners at a minimum? I'm also guessing yes to that. I don't know for sure. And of course, no, realistically, nobody would make no changes literally for a span of two decades. I'm just making a point that even if that were the case, that's that's why it's so great to have broad exposure. You can lose on almost everything, but if you have a couple big winners over the span, because and I say big winners because there's almost no money in the asset class, that is the reason. You can get crazy multiplier effects. That's it. Why isn't that the message that's being... Pre I, don't, I don't really see anybody. Everybody's so short-term focused or about what's happening this market cycle. You got to sell this market cycle. Well, if you want to, go ahead. Uh, I haven't cashed out to you to, to United States dollars yet, and I've been in this almost seven years, and people can give me crap about that, but I'm thrilled with what I'm doing. It's about being more stubborn and patient than anyone else, and it works. Wouldn't you know it? I'm not trying to time stuff and get in. A, when I sell one day, and I, I think it's going to happen this market cycle, it's because it will be, I'll have accumulated to such a degree that it will be such an outsized portion of my net worth that I will feel so enticed that I must. 
And if that happens, this will that will be the first time. But it's already worth even now, worth way more than I put in. But why isn't that the message? Because it's getting in and out and and doing the read and it's just all these bogus narratives. It's a bunch of crap. It's about liquidity cycles, folks. If 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 we're in a risk on environment, then you're going to see a bunch of money pump, pumped into the stock market and the crypto asset class. That's why I don't have a freaking course to sell you because it's that simple. I'm not saying there's no risk and there are additional complexities, but the sim the simple part in is is that in terms of what causes it to go that. And so this all this nonsense, it's just silly. It's just silly. You guys tell me what you think. I'll stop yapping. But those are some of my basic thoughts. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.